This is terrifying. No, it's exciting. Super exciting because we are going live today. We, I say we, because it's mostly me, but also it's kind of Elisa and Kate. They're just busy working. So we're going live with Darcy. Hi. Um, let me see if I can add her here real quick. Done this for with two people. This is so interesting. So excited to chat with you guys today and answer all of your marketing questions. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. It is. It's very exciting. I've got to figure out how to hold my charger and my phone at the same time. There, I think I got it. Hi, how are you? I'm super excited to be here. Oh, uh, thank you so much for taking time away from your busy schedule and doing this. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, no, this is my favorite thing to talk about and nobody believes me, but I love talking about growing a business. I love talking about marketing. I love giving creatives like ideas outside of where they're currently thinking. So these lives are like so much fun to me. I know you're new at them, but they're so fun. I know, I'm like, oh gosh, but yes, I'm doing it, doing it, trying to be brave. <laughs> Um, well, you have just been transformative. I know I've shared a little bit about it on our blog and on here, um, but we, I hired you as my business coach back in January and it has just been life changing and I'm so grateful for you and all that you've taught me already in just such a short period of time. And the marketing map has had such a big part of that too. Like just all of your marketing knowledge is like life changing. Thank you. Uh, you know what I love about you, though, is that you like really have a vision for where you want your business to go. And you're willing to think outside of the box, because I think a lot of creative struggle. And I think we're going to talk about like, three of the biggest marketing mistakes that I see creatives making photographers, florists, anybody in the wedding industry is that they tend to like look at what other people are doing and do that exact same thing, you know? Wait, did I flip my screen around or something? Hold on a second. You did. I think I did. Okay, <laughs> I wow, like, oh, clearly. Show, I was like, oh, she's oh, gonna show stats. Wait. This is awesome. Like, what is happening now? Okay, is it, it's like tapping a photo will show it. No, I don't wanna show a photo. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> just, just don't touch anything. Okay. <laughs> Can you, oh no, it's still back on my screen. I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is awesome. There we go. All right. Sorry. New here. I was trying to wave at someone and then it was like, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, sorry. Continue. Okay. Yeah, no, just that like, I think a lot of people do the same things again and again and again in their business and they're realizing that it's not working. Like I remember back when I started 2010 if you were just blogging you were like killing it like you were just reigning in the seo people were you were getting good you know you're getting increased from blogging now that doesn't happen at all now everybody feels like there's so much competition which there is now everybody's kind of like freaking out about their inquiries dropping and all of that so it's really easy to go into fear mode i think as far as running a creative business like will i survive is my business going to make it where are my bookings why are they lower and so those kind of questions actually i know they freak most people out they actually excite me because i love finding the answers i love going to marketing conferences and finding and seeing what other businesses are doing and bringing it back and teaching it to creatives to see how they could bring in more, more work. So I think you and I were going to talk about three of the biggest mistakes that we see people making in this industry. And if any of you guys have questions while you're asking specific, let me know, let, let us know because we want to kind of dive into three big things and then we can point you to a masterclass where you could get um, a little training with me about how I handle like bringing in more clients. Awesome. I love it. And I think that's one of the things I really love the most about you too, is like, I think so much in this industry, we just think about like WPPI and like the photo conferences and you really think outside of the box. And I think that's what makes you so, um, just like well-rounded and brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I think it is very, I learned this very early on in my business that, um, you know, photographers are so good at networking, but they are really crappy at marketing. 
So going to WPPI, when I would go, I would just network. You know, it was great. I'd make great friends with other photographers, but that wasn't helping me bring in the clients, you know. So I really go and study how client acquisition happens, especially in a creative field, Um, especially since the old tools that we were all relying on don't work anymore. So how do we make it work from there? So um, so let's dive into the three mistakes, okay? Yeah. Okay. So oh, Michelle and I were talking and the, all during this week, and we were talking about these three mistakes and, and what we see people doing when they are really struggling to bring in. Can anybody make a guess for the first one? The first one that I see all of the time is that people think they're marketing when they're posting on Instagram every day. So they think I'm doing Instagram, thus I'm marketing. And they don't realize that Instagram is like 2% of what you could be doing to market 2%. And you guys are treating it like it's 95% of what you could do to market 95%. It's 2% mostly because to be honest, my clients don't come from Instagram my relationships with photographers and like when I coach other photographers that comes from Instagram, but most of my wedding inquiries do not come from Instagram. They come from five other marketing funnels. If you guys don't know what a funnel is, but it's a way that you, um, bring Jamie's like Instagram is life, Jamie. (laughs) I mean, Darcy, I know I just called her my name, but, um, yeah, we all think that, right. Cause we're photographers. So it's really easy for us to do Instagram. It's really easy for us to do that. And, um, Jamie just learned in a very hard way as she's joking on here, she got shadow banned on Instagram just like two weeks ago and all of her followers dropped off. Remember the day that Instagram stopped? I think it was like March 22nd yeah. the day that we'll go in infamy or something and everybody yeah. freaked out and everybody got a wake up call of, okay, wow. If my Instagram isn't working, do I have any way yes. that I communicate with anybody? So having marketing strategies outside of Instagram is absolutely imperative. I would be spending two to three hours a week on Instagram and that's it. And most people are spending 20 and, and most of them are just scrolling and looking yeah. and feeling bad about themselves yes. and they're not really doing all the other funnels. I know it's crazy. We really ramped up our Pinterest game. Cause that seems to be the biggest place for our traffic right now. And literally traffic to our website is like up over 200%. Like most of our that traffic comes from Pinterest. It's insane. Yeah. Most, a lot of my, most of my traffic comes from Pinterest too. I'm very, very dedicated about Pinterest. And the thing about Pinterest is the algorithm is super easy. I don't know if it'll always be that way, but right now it's so easy to win on Pinterest. So, so easy. Um, especially if you take people on a journey. So, uh, one of the things I talk about in the marketing map is you don't want to just pin. You have to like create pins that bring people to your site that then lead them on a journey. You don't want to just leave people only to your homepage. I mean, there's so many Pinterest strategies that we talk about in the marketing map and that we can talk about, you know, right now. So yeah, so that's, that's, that's the first big mistake I see people making. The second big mistake. What is it? I told you it. Now I'm trying to remember it. <laughs> your uniqueness. I, I know there's one about selling and there's one about, Oh, not, you know out. this. You were yeah. going to talk about this, like just not standing out enough, like not having a, a brand. Yeah. Well, and just really, I think, and I myself included, um, up until the last couple of years, like I really struggled feeling like I'm just a photographer. How am I different? Like people would say like, what is your yeah. only factor? And it's like, I don't know. I just take pictures. Like I like it. It's like, I really had to like have an outsider tell me, no, it's because you love relationships. Like you are in it for, for the people. Like how can you really show them? Like you really want to be their legacy photographer and like lean into that and bring in pieces of the fact that like, I love to bake and we love friends and like really bring our personality into our business. Yeah. Yeah. I think bringing your personality, I think taking photos that reflect that, I think redoing your website copy with a language that is very branded. I think most of all realizing, and it's something that I coined and called your marketing magnet. And so I talk a lot about this. What is magnetizing you? What brings people to you? What draws people to you? You know, I have like 
educational clients drawn to me because I'm so straightforward about websites and I'm just so like, I don't give any fluff information. Like I don't just kind of build up a false idea. I just really tell it to people straight. I know my wedding clients come to me because I have an array of destination work all shot on film and I have a very, um, very minimalistic approach to my wedding. So I'm really like not in the fray very much. And I, and I kind of document the day. So I have, and I get referral after referral because I've really tailored that in. So yeah. I think people think it has to be something really hard and it has to be something really out there and they feel very disconnected from themselves when they try to think about like, how are they different? Yeah. But it can't, but I think you already know and then you just have to take that and remind people of it again and again and again and again. And then you're effortlessly building this perception of your business. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, yeah and we love yeah. talking about the, the magnet and through the course. That was probably the biggest eye opener for me. It was like, oh, I didn't really think about, I didn't really realize kind of what we were doing. And, and now I'm like leaning into it, you know? So I love how much you talk about that in the course. And you just had a huge epiphany. We won't tell what it is, but you just had a whole epiphany yes. around what your language is going to be for your brand. And yeah. it was so right. Like as soon as you <laughs> said it and we started talking about it, it was like, this is it, right? Yeah. You know, it, it like feels so good. Cause, and this, and this, uh, these epiphanies, this awareness of your work, this like connection to your work, it can happen for each and every one of you, everyone. Audience, give a heart. I feel disconnected from you. Are you all there? <laughs> there's, there's several of you watching. Give us a little heart. So we're not, we're, do you guys feel that? Are you guys feeling that in your business? Like just that need to take your business just that one step further into becoming yes. more who you okay. are. That's like, yay. Thank you. Thanks flowers by Renee. Thanks Maria. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Madam St. Vintage. I love that. Thanks, Collected Script. Oh, she just joined. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, hey, Julia. Hello, Sugar. Oh, that's a cute, that's a cute name. That's cute. Cute. Hello, Sugar Photography. You could do so much branding with that. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, you could do so much fun with that. Okay. Are you guys ready to hear number three? Ready to hear number three? Okay. Number three. Once you have the brand, once you're marketing, you don't know how to sell. I don't know what it is about artists, but they really get very nervous to sell and they think their photos or their flowers or their service will sell itself. They think if I'm just the best photographer in the world, then my photos will sell themselves and it's not going to happen. Some of my most talented photographer friends are the poorest. They don't sell, they get nervous to sell, they feel uncomfortable selling, they, they feel gross selling, they hate the word selling. But I'm gonna tell you all, you're in business right now to sell. And if you can actually figure out what your clients want to be sold, you can sell without it feeling um, bad, but it will need to feel bold. So I'm like, listen, it doesn't have to feel bad, but you can't just sit back on, you know, and just be a wallflower in your business or you'll really, really struggle. So we talk a lot about like how to sell, how to get your clients what they want. And I talk about a lot of that on the masterclass, which I think Michelle, yeah. you have a link to the masterclass in your bio. Yes, yes, we'll have that. If you just click on our like Cotton Collective link, there's like the first thing that should pop up is the, the webinar masterclass. Yeah, so there's just like a free 90 minute masterclass that will dive in deep to how to sell to your clients how to figure out a little bit of what you want and examples of people who really found their magnet and how like their marketing magnet, like what about them attracted their audience and how it's radically transformed their businesses and their lives. You know, some of them have moved to States. You know, I had one girl, she moved from Utah shooting $1,500 weddings to New York city shooting runways. And she just, um, she just like was photographing all these stars for fashion week. And it, it's just inc incredible when you find out those magnets of marketing that you have, it's incredible. And you, yeah. yeah. And you just are able to start bringing that to the forefront and you radically shift your entire brand. And then you're able to sell more because you're more aware of what exactly you're giving your client and what they want. 
Right. Totally. I love it. I love it. Well, you are so amazing. Thank you so much for popping in here. I know you have a very busy schedule, so I appreciate you. Oh, we all do. I mean, creatives, we're just always like running all over the place, aren't we? <laughs> yes, all the we're time. Like, How do I market? How do I create? We have to create so much content. We have to, you know, it, I will end with this and just say being good in this industry is like being mediocre now. Like we have to be so much better than just good. And that shouldn't scare you. I feel like that should excite you. Like it should excite you to push yourself to the limits of your creativity. It should yeah. excite you to gain the new skills to learn how customers and clients are acquired into your business outside of Instagram. It should excite you, you know, not in a place of overwhelm, not where you have to work like 20 hours a day doing it, but in a place where you can start slowly and consistently making that brand happen, getting your clients and offering them new ideas of what they want. You know, there's ideas outside of the box everywhere. They're right. everywhere. Yeah. And don't be afraid to just do what you really want to do. Like, this has always been a hard thing for me because people always just told me to like niche down, niche down. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to, like, I want to photograph everything for that same couple from the beginning to the end. Like, that's it. So I, I just like want to get to the point where I'm like, I'm, I don't have new clients, you know, yeah. like, I just have my clients that I've been with forever. So that's where I'm, but like, and if you don't like niche, to be honest, yeah. like, cause you're, you're niching down to your relationships with people. Yeah, totally. And yeah. it's like, if you don't want to photograph newborns or babies or families or whatever it is, like, don't, don't just do it because you know, you have to like, go for, go for what you really oh, love. Totally. Agreed. Agreed. Awesome. Well, this was so fun. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You're well, wonderful. Don't forget to check out um, the masterclass, the free masterclass that she has. It's really amazing. Um, everything that she teaches is awesome. It's fun. I love marketing. I know it's such a dorky thing to love, but I really do. So anything, anytime I can help people like learn it, it's, it just, it just makes the industry better to be honest. Like the more we all know how to run our businesses with power and confidence and learn and, and a drive to, get paid what we're worth, the more it elevates everybody's business, to be honest. So it's important we all learn these skills. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.